the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Prabhupada. And after that, Eshi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. What was their mission? Same mission. And myself also have come for the preaching the same mission. In 1920, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada established the Gaudiya Mat to guide the world into the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Protected within that institution, at its very core, lay the pristine jewel that is unique to the Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya Sampradaya that Srila Rupa Goswami had established in this world. Widespread exploitation of the Sampradaya's esoteric tenets had urged Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur to powerfully dismantle all misconceptions and malpractices that were flourishing in the name of Gaudiya. Through the Gaudiya Mat, Srila Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada carried on this work with the same vigor. What looked like a different form of Gaudiya Vaishnavism was in fact a resurgence of its pure message. For the first time, the organized distribution of Mahaprabhu's teachings swept India, and later, the entire world. With proper conceptions and practices established, and a strong framework in place, the time was ripe to bring into focus the jewel of the Gaudiya conceptions shining within the noble Saraswat lineage. It was 1946, and the Gaudiya Mat had been bereft of its founder Acharya for nearly ten years. A series of skirmishes between certain factions fragmented this once unified movement. Some lost hope and returned to their homes, keeping their beloved Gurudev's teachings in their heart. Some became allured by the very philosophies they had previously combated. And some disciples continued to dynamically spread his mission, often establishing their own mats for this purpose. A society in which pure Vaishnavs are present never stagnates, and soon the mission of Srila Saraswati Thakur recovered its momentum the original Mat's offshoots reached ever new lands. Prominent among these disciples was Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. Even in a country blessed by the touch of Sri Bhagavan's lotus feet, he was compelled to battle the forces of Mayavad. He did this powerfully while imparting profound insights into Gaudiya conceptions. The grateful Vaishnav community lauded his efforts. He had received sannyas in 1941 from his revered godbrother, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj. So in this year of 1946, Sriman Narayan Tiwari, having met a disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and feeling called to dedicate his life to Mahaprabhu's mission, abandoned all material ties and journeyed to Sri Navadvip Dham to take complete shelter at the lotus feet of his eternal master, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. In 1952, his Gurudev awarded him, along with two esteemed godbrothers, sannyas. They became 
in order of seniority, Srimad Bhaktivedanta Vaman Maharaj, Srimad Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj, and Srimad Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. They shared a profound lifelong friendship in the service of their Gurudev. In 1959, Srila Narayan Goswami Maharaj assisted his Gurudev with a momentous sannyas ceremony. His Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, gave sannyas to Sri Abhai Charanaravinda Prabhu, whom Srila Narayan Goswami Maharaj had met in 1947. Sri Abhai Charanaravinda Prabhu was given the name Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. It was Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada who, just six years later, pioneered the worldwide preaching of Mahaprabhu's mission. From his early Mat life, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj also served other prominent disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. He traveled throughout India presenting the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu which he had received from his Gurudev and the Gaudiya Vaishnav Acharyas. Upon repeated requests from devotees overseas, he journeyed abroad. Between 1996 and 2010, he traveled the world more than 30 times, leading illuminating festivals of Harikatha and Kirtan. Time and time again around the world, he would give the, the essential understanding of who Mahaprabhu is, what he came to give. That whatever we heard from him, he always made the point that he was never presenting anything new or different from any of the other Acharyas in our line. To make sure we understood that this philosophy, uh, the beauty and, and, and the integrity of it, is what our Acharyas have come to reveal and to preserve and maintain. Following in the footsteps of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, he led the annual Parikramas of Sri Navadip Tham and Sri Brajamandal, guiding thousands of pilgrims into Mahaprabhu's sacred teachings. He translated over 60 Gaudiya scriptures into Hindi, many with cherished commentaries by predecessor masters in this line, and sometimes penning his own illuminations. Most of these books have already been translated into English and numerous other languages, while the remainder are in process. He inaugurated the Rays of the Harmonist magazine, a name foretold by Srila Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, who called it the Harmonist's child mouthpiece. In this magazine, articles by pure Gaudiya Vaishnavas are rendered into English for the first time. Through classes, publications, darshans, morning walks, parikramas, artwork, and even through the drama plays that he inspired, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, referred to by his disciples and followers as Srila Gurudev, clarified the reasons for Sriman Mahaprabhu's descent, in particular, the jewel he came to give. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Daya By deliberating on the mercy of Shri Krishna Chaitanya, your heart will be filled with wonder. We want to come to 
the subject, the main reasons that Krishna appeared in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Oh, here very presently. <laughs> Sri Krishna thought, For a long time I have not bestowed Prem Bhakti upon the inhabitants of the universe. Without such Bhakti, this world would cease to exist. My partial expansions can establish the Yuga Dharma, but no one other than me can bestow Braj Prem. Advaita Acharya, a very intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya. And he came before Lord Chaitanya. He was thinking that, how can I, how can I make him Advent? He found a verse in the scripture. Tulasi Dalapatrena, Jalasya Chulakenava, that the Supreme Lord, he's so grateful to devotees that if somebody worships him, just worships him with Ganga water and Tulasi leaves, he feels so indebted that he can only give himself to that devotee. How he was worshipping? I heard he was crying and weeping and calling. This is the process of Kirtan. Not only Archan will do, but giving this, I am offering this. Ganga Jal and Tulsi Manjari with Tulsi Le. This calling is called Kirtan. And that is why Krishna heard and he decided that I should must go immediately. And at last, Lord Chaitanya appeared. distribute this name and print with print. But he has told that name can be established by name Sankirtan by Mahavishnu. But print he cannot do. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in this period, at the time of Juga Dharma preaching, he told that that also I will do. Also, I will do, and this rare thing which anyone cannot give, that when I will also give. So, name goes. So, we should understand this fact that when will come through name which He has given pain. but name Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare When I saw the commentaries and explanation of Raghunath Das Goswami and especially of Jiva Goswami then I knew that Hari Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taken this name Anyone can have the Dasya of Radhika if he will change this name only.
He tested mainly all the five kinds of rasas. Especially, he tested gopism, madhur rasas. But he was not satisfied by that. I wanted to know why. Srimati Radhika test me more than anyone, more than myself. Hmm. But she becomes mad for me. Why? How could test my beauty, my everything? So Krishna came to taste her mood in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You can see in Sri Shikshashtakam his revelations of this mood of prem or love and affection for Krishna while experiencing her moods. This is called Una Tojvala Ras, the supreme, highest, most bright. Unata Ujvala means the top most brilliant rasa. That is her rasa. I have not fulfilled my three desires. Radhaya pranay mahima kiddisho va nirayva asvaddo janad bhat madarima kiddisho va madhiya shokhanchasya madarin bhavata kiddisho vittilo va tad bhavadra samjani sachi garva sindho harindho That he wants to taste the glory of Radha's love. That he wants to taste his own astonishing sweetness and that he wants to relish the happiness that Radha experiences from receiving the sweetness of his love. Intense greed to taste these three things arose within the heart of Sri Krishna, and to fulfill that desire, he took birth from the womb of Sri Shachi Devi, like the moon appearing from the ocean. When Shri Gurudev explained it, you get such a sense of the beauty and uh, sentiments of Mahaprabhu and how extraordinary it must be to take to the devotional path. It's so desirable and so wonderful that God himself wanted to take it up. So if I will take the mood and beauty of Srimati Radhika, then I can test my soul. So that verse, Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Ki Drisho Vanayaiva, this is written by Swarup Damodar Goswami. He was the chief authority uh, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he wrote these key verses that are used for the first chapters of, of Adi Lila, Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is the basis of Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami's presentation. Who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is himself Krishna. Krishna become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Pass not Krishna alone, plus Radharani. Jadi Gaur. 
रंग नही तो तब की हो तो के मने धोरी तो दे राधा रामी मा प्रेम रस सीमा राधा रिमा प्रेम रस सीमा जगत जाना तो के जगत जाना तो के प्रेम रस निर्यासी कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ वॉन्टेड टू टेस्ट दि एसेंस ऑफ ऑल प्रेम रस एंड दट्स क्लियरली expanded upon in that chapter fourth chapter how he wanted to come with his eternal associates and for what purpose rag marg bhakti loke khori te pracharan to preach the pathway of rag marg bhakti not vaidhi bhakti vaidhi bhakti had already been given in the previous yugas and in the various vaishnava sampradayas but rag marg bhakti leading to braja prem well, was uniquely only given by chaitanya mahaprabhu and his associates he said he had two desires in fact prem ras niryas this slope it says that mahaprabhu came for two reasons one is that he wanted to play, uh, taste this prem ras secondly he wanted to uh, he wanted to expand he wanted to give um, devotional service not normal devotional service but a uh, devotional service based on spontaneous love means ragmark so these are two reasons vedi marga rata jane swati nata ratna tane राग मार्गे करा प्रवेश राग मार्गे करा प्रवेश राग मार्गे करा प्रवेश भक्ति आर ऑफ टू काइंड्स वन इज वैदि भक्ति एंड सेकेंड इज रागानुगा भक्ति फर्स्ट वी शुड बिगिन फ्रॉम वैदि भक्ति सो देर आर टू काइंड ऑफ भक्ति वैदि भक्ति एंड रागानुगा भक्ति वैदि भक्ति इज दैट डिवोशन व्हिच इज इम्पेल्ड बाय फेथ इन द रिवील्ड स्क्रिप्चर्स बेस्ड ऑन फियर एंड ड्यूटी Raganuga bhakti is that devotion 
which is impelled by a greed to follow any of the personal associates of Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan, to follow in their footsteps. Shri Krishna thought, Aware of my divine majesty, the entire world worships me in a mood of awe and veneration. But love enfeebled by such reverence fails to attract me. If a person regards me as his lord and himself as a subordinate, I do not become controlled by his love. So that Raganuga Bhakti is described as being the only way through which a sadak in this world can attain that braja prem which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. Vaidhi Bhakti Prem will lead you to Vaikunth Dham and Raganuga it will take you to o Krishna Dham. Highest stage will be achieved by Raganuga. You are lucky to come in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Those who come in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are fortunate because they have the opportunity to enter Raganuga Bhakti, which leads to the topmost section of Krishna Dham, Braja Gokul. Vaidhi Bhakti in and of itself does not lead to Raganuga, but those who sincerely practice Vaidhi Bhakti in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will eventually receive the qualification to enter Raganuga Bhakti. Such a transition comes through hearing from a pure Vaishnav who is practicing Raganuga Bhakti. This Raganuga Sadhan, it is something that's given from the heart it, of, of one who has this current of, of of divine love coming through them and by hearing from them, from hearing their Harikata, you, you, some type of greed develops in you that, oh, I also would like to follow in this way. To clearly understand Raganuga Bhakti that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give, it is necessary to first understand the meaning of Ragatmika and of Rag. Nishpal Siddham, Nand Baba Jasoda Mahiya, and especially in his Gopi, especially in Lalita Vishakha and Srimati Radhika. Rag means love and affection by which they serve Krishna and they control Krishna. This is Rag. In whom this Rag is there, there is Radha Nika. Here Rupa Goswami Pad, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu very clearly explain about Ragatmik John and Raganuga John. Ragatmik, that is called those eternal associates of Krishna, Krishna's Nitta Parikar. The eternal associates of Krishna who are called Ragatmik Jan, their relationships, their exchanges of rasa with Krishna in the f five primary rasas, particularly in Braj four rasas. That is servitude friendship like Krishna's cowherd boyfriends, Vatsalya, which is parental mood like Madhya Shoda, Nanda Baba, and Madhurya, like Srimati Radhika, Lalita Vishaka, Champaklata, Tungavidya, Sudevi Ranga Devi, and so many other millions of gopis. Those exchanges with Krishna in Braj are on the platform of Rag. Rag means intense uh, thirst unquenchable thirst uh, for the object of your love. And that rag atmic means those eternal associates, their bodies are made of this. Their very selves are non-different than their moods of love for Krishna. Sri Krishna thought, I will relish the essence of all these rasas 
and thus bestow grace upon the devotees. Hearing about the pristine rag of the bridge buses, the devotees will engage in loving devotional service to me in rag marg, leaving all customs of religiosity and fruitive action. Mother Yasoda, Nanda, Subal, Siddham, and Gopis. Dega Ragat Mika, eternally associate in Golok Baikuntha Dham. And those who follow them are Raganuga. Nowadays, many have idea that they have Raganuga Bhakti. No, very easy we can tell with her thousands of mouths. But really we should see and examine our hearts that any worldly desire, sport, any gandha, smell, smell of any worldly desire is there in heart or not. And by listening to Guru there all the years, then now little understanding is coming, not fully, because I'm a Bada Jiva, you know, I forget. But if they hear about the goal from a Rasik Vaishnava, even in the very beginning stages, that is extremely beneficial. But it doesn't mean that now they're qualified to practice Rag Marg Bhakti, no. They have to take up the process. Gurudev also preached how an ordinary sadhak, step by step, develop his bhajan and sadhan, that means how to enter Vaidhi Marga and then come to Rag Marga. Raganuga sadhan can really only be practiced in the higher stages of bhakti. But by the mercy of one who is practicing Raganuga bhakti, a person can develop a desire to practice it and truly yearn to serve Krishna like one of the Brajabhasis. Hearing from Srila Gurudev, he used to say, just like a very ugly, uh, lame, poor, unqualified man, he may see Princess Diana go by and desire, I would like to marry her. No one can stop that desire. So in the same way, hearing of the glorious pastimes of, of the divine couple and hearing of the, of the beauty of the, of the conceptions of Rupa Goswami and the Rupa Nuga Guru Varga and, and hearing of the divine aspirations of all those generals in that line from Srila Rupa Goswami, some little desire came to us that I also would like to join this movement. I also would like to be in this family line. I also would like to to one day have that aspiration. The process to aspire for and enter Raganuga Sadhan is explained by Srila Rupa Goswami in the following verse, which is said to be the essence of all instruction. While living in Braj, as a follower of the eternal residents of Braj, who possess inherent, spontaneous love for Sri Krishna, one should utilize all one's time by sequentially engaging the tongue and the mind in meticulous chanting and remembrance of Krishna's names, form, qualities, and pastimes. This is the essence of all instruction. Sometimes there is a misconception that Raganuga Bhakti is some kind of loose devotion in which one follows the whims of the mind and discards the scriptural regulations pertaining to Vaidhi Bhakti. In Rag Vartma Chandrika, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that those who claim that Raganuga Bhakti is always beyond the different rules and regulations of the scriptures are reprehensible. 
Because they disregard the scriptural injunctions, such persons always experience disturbances and obstacles in their path of obtaining pure bhakti. The advanced devotee, who is inclined to spontaneous loving service, follows the activities of a particular associate of Krishna's in Vrindavan and practices Raganuga Bhakti in two ways. In the sadhak group, the external body in which they are situated, and in the Siddha Rup, their internal, self-realized form. So thank you, Zaya person, devotees are of Raganuga. We are all among bodies of We should try to do bodies of the of Krishna. And by coming, we will have the association of Anasik Vaishnav, like uh, Sukadeva Goswami, Narada Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Raghunath, Das Goswami, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and his line. Then they can come anyhow, a very little grief for this thing. In summary, all the inhabitants of Braj, including the gopas, gopis, cows, calves, animals and birds, are ragatmika. Sadaks who follow the mood of these inhabitants of Braj in order to attain their bhav are called raganuga. Amongst these raganuga sadaks, only those who specifically follow the internal mood of Srila Rupa Goswami are Rupanuga. Thus, every Rupanuga sadhak is also a Raganuga sadhak. But Raganuga sadhaks are not necessarily Rupanuga. Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakada Mahyam Nadati Svapadantikam That Rupa Goswami is that person who established the inner heart's desire, what he wanted to give, Rupa Goswami established that in this world. So we're offering our pranam again and again to Sri Rupa Goswami. You are lucky, very lucky that you are all in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami. Hearing and hearing, oh, attachment will come. A relation will come, very strong relation will come. One of the common questions our Gurudev would ask us was, what is the difference between Raga, Nuga, and a Rupa Nuga. All Raga Nuga are not Rupa Nuga, but all Rupa Nuga are really Raga Nuga. Too. Srimati Radhika's maidservants are Ragatmika because they're also eternal transcendental associates of Krishna in Vrindavan. However, 
the maidservants of Srimati Radhika have a particular mood and they're following in the mood of Sri Rupa Manjari, who is the prominent or the leader of Srimati Radhika's maidservants. And so those who are following that particular line of Ragatmika Bhakti under the guidance of Sri Rupa Manjari, who has manifested in this world to us as Sri Rupa Goswami, those who are following that particular form of Ragatmika Bhakti who, or who are aspiring for that, they are known as Rupanugas. So Rupanuga is contained within Raganuga, but not all Raganuga is contained within Rupanuga. So our Gurudev really wanted us to get this point very clearly. The Rupanugas know no other treasure than Sri Radhika's divine lotus feet. Who are Rupanuga? Those are actually following the mood of Rupa Goswami. So all Acharyas are Rupanuga, not only Raganuga. So it is very, very important thing. Sri Rupa Manjari Pada Sei Mora Sampada When the conception of being a fully protected and maintained maidservant of Sri Vishabhanu Nandini Sri Radha appears in our heart, then no other worldly identifications, which are all insignificant in comparison, can overpower it. Devotees of Vishnu are Vaishnavs. Devotees of Krishna are Karshnas. And devotees of Sri Radha are Gaudiyas. In the song Dushtaman, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur has saved for us in golden words, the essence of all teachings, so that we may attain service to Srimati Radharani, Radha Dasyam, in Parama Unata Ujvala Ras, the supremely exalted and most radiant Ras. We cannot be Lalita Vishakha, we cannot be Radhika, we cannot be any one of them. We can be only the servant, maid servant of the office. And this is the highest thing for any conditional soul. Padabjayastava vinavaradasameva Nanya Oh Devi Radhike, I never at any moment beg for anything but this most exalted service to your lotus feet. I offer pranam time and again, forever, to the mood of being your friend. But may I only truly relish the nectar of being your maidservant. Rup Goswami, Rup Manjari. He has a special service to Srimati Radhika, which is not in Lalita. That verse, Anarpita Chiring Chirat, our Gurudev explained, is really the essence of the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Anarpita Chiring Chirat Karnaya Vatirna Kalau Samarapaitumunna Tajjal Sangsa Bhakti Sriyam 
हरि पूर्ण सुंदर द्यूत कदम्बर संदी पिता सदा हृदय कंदरे May the son of Shrimati Shachi Devi, Shri Gorahari, forever manifest spontaneously within the innermost core of your heart. Adorned with the radiant splendor of molten gold, he has descended in the age of Kali out of his causeless compassion to bestow upon the world that which has not been given for an unimaginably long time, the beauty of of his own brilliantly radiant Ujjvala Premras Bhakti, service in the highest relationship of amorous love. Chaitanya Mahapuru came, Krishna himself came, taking the mood and, okay. and complexion of Radhika. Why? Why? To give what thing? Unnat Ujjvala Rasam Sa Bhakti Sriyam Although he is giving Krishna Prema to the world, it's a very particular kind of Krishna Prem that he's endeavoring to awaken, especially through the medium of Rupa Goswami. So this Unata Ujvala Rasa means Madhurya Rasa and it means the topmost. So only Srimati Radhika's Prem is in that category. It's not possible for the jivas to directly experience Srimati Radhika's Prem because they don't have the constitutional position. But what he came to give, which Rupa Goswami wrote in that verse, is Unnata Ujvala Rasa Swa Bhakti Shriyam. And that is specifically detailing the mood of Madhurya Rasa of the maid servants of Srimati Radhika. So you should know this is Unnata Ujvala Rasa. And the beauty of this, this the kinkaris, the maid servant of Radhika. Mood is this. Radha Rasarupa Krishna Prema Kalpalata Saki Gana Hoy Tar Palapushpa Pata Krishna Lila. By nature, Sri Radha is like a wish fulfilling vine of Krishna Prem. And the Sakis are the sprouts, flowers, and leaves on that vine. When the nectar of Krishna's pastimes is sprinkled on that vine, the sprouts, flowers, and leaves experience a happiness millions of times greater than if they were to be directly sprinkled with that nectar. So, what is Swabhakti Shriyam? It means the moods of the maidservants the beauty of the vine of love of God. Srimati Radhika is compared to the vine and all the leaves and all the manjaris and the flowers on the vine are called the beauty, the Shriyam. It is noteworthy that Srila Rupa Goswami and his foremost followers, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Naratam Das Thakur, Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and others have expressed a yearning to attain the position of a maidservant of Srimati Radharani in numerous volumes of prose, poems, and songs. That whole science is explained in Ujjvala Nilamani and many other literatures of the Acharyas. Our aim and object is to be in the guidance of Rum Manjai and to serve Radha and Krishna. All are Krishna's own, who is most nearest and dearest, Srimati Radhika. Sabhakti means har bhakti, Sriya means beauty, means sobha, 
what is her beauty of her bhakti is manjaris that manjaris they had so much intimacy with radhika and they experience what shrimati radhika is experiencing The actual form of Radharani is just like a creeper embracing the tree of Krishna and the damsels of Braj the associates of Radharani are just like the leaves and flowers of that creeper when a creeper embraces a tree the leaves and flowers of the creeper automatically embrace it it really only struck me when i heard it and actually read it in shrila bhakti rakshak shridhar maharaj's book shri guru and his grace the last chapter so radha dasyam the servitorship of shrimati radharani is said to be the highest attainment of the living being by the school established by mahaprabhu rupa anuga rupa manjari she is the leader of all the manjaris and there the highest quality of union and ras is found so rupa anuga position the most profitable position has been given out by mahaprabhu that is the highest limit of your fortune this has been shown beyond hope our highest prospect lies there in that subtle camp of shri rupa rupa manjari rupa goswami So the sampradaya of Mahaprabhu is known as the Rupanuga sampradaya. There is located our fate, our fortune. Brisabhanu suta charana sevane vaiva je pallodasi Sabhano suta charana sevane vaiva je palladasi Siradhara su satata sadhane siradhara narpita charin it has been not given before chaitanya mahaprabhu came prior to chaitanya mahaprabhu even krishna came ramchandra came hmm? or oh, even so many came jade goswami came hmm? and so many madhvacharya ramanuj vishnu swami nimbadit all came even hanuman came with ramchandra even sita came bharat came so many came or oh, anyone could not get this So Rupa Goswami is saying this has not been given charim chirat means has not been given for chirat very long long time and that long time period is billions and billions of years one day of lord brahma is said to last 1000 chatur yugas or 4 billion 320 million years in the 7th manvantara In the 28th Chatur Yuga, at the end of the Dwapar Yuga, Krishna, the source of all avatars, appears. Approximately 4,500 years later, in the following Kali Yuga, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears. He is Krishna himself, come to relish the preem of Shrimati Radhika and to give Raganuga Bhakti, which leads to Braj Vrindavan. only 
Krishna can give that. No one else, no other avatar, no Vishnu manifestations, no others can give what he can give. And he can only give this when he is in this golden form. Even when he's in his Krishna form, he doesn't freely give this. But when he comes combined with Srimati Radhika, then he can give this. If someone continues to read the books of Raghunath Das Goswami, Vilapa Kushamanjali, Utkalika Vallari of Srila Rupa Goswami and many, many others, they will see they're always aspiring for this. This is their ultimate goal, is to relish and taste and be engaged eternally in the service of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika and the divine couple Radha and Krishna. And that's what Krishna Consciousness is, it's, as Prabhupada said, it's not an artificial imposition. It's a natural stirring in the heart to love and serve the Divine Couple and, and be part of their, their pastimes, which is what the Maha Mantra is. It's Radha and Krishna and trying to, to give pleasure in their service. This is the goal of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. This Krishna Consciousness Movement is for approaching Radha Krishna to be associated with the Supreme Lord and His Sublime Pleasure Dance. Shri Radha Ra Sukhe Krishna Jesu Shri Radha Ra Sukhe Krishna Raya Jesu Jani ba mon hete ame, Jani ba mon hete ame. Radha pada chadi, Sri Krishna sangha me, Radha pada chadi, Until now, we have simply occupied ourselves in the process of negation, rejecting that which is not. It is true that we do not approve of the fraudulent interpretations propounded by the Sahajiyas, but then we must also provide the real explanations in place of the condemned ones. The positive element, it is this, must be established. Without understanding the sadhya, what it is that you are trying to attain, uh, you then it will not be possible to ascertain what it is the process that you will have to undergo in order to attain that. And he would not stop. And if you know the goal, then you know which train to get on. You know, if you don't know the goal, you might get on the train to go to Bombay instead of to Vrindavan. You might get on the train to go to Ayodhya. You know, you might end up in Vaikuntha. No, we want to get on the train that's going to Braja Vrindavan, especially Govardhan, especially Radhika. Like this, at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani and her Sakis. We should make a goal of our life. And I have told again and again, our goal is what? Radha Dasya. That is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give to the jivas that was never given before for a very, very long time.
Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj strongly encouraged devotees to aspire for the gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. However, he just as strongly cautioned against imitation. He also recognized that when you present something so high, there are always going to be people that want to take shortcuts and want to cheat and go around the proper process. And he used to lament about that, that there will be many Sahaja types, people that will try to spoil the process of bhakti. But still, I have to give this because if I don't give this understanding, it will be lost in time. They want to cheat, they want to experience that which is meant to be experienced by those who are realized, who are on the stage of bhava or rati or ashakti. Yeah. They want to experience that without going through the process. Yeah. Any spiritual development can never stagnate, ever. It's not that I want to be the king in my own little world where I know everything. He not only revealed that the goal is Radhadasyam, but also gave the procedure, especially from Chaitanya Charitamrita and all the revealed scriptures, how to attain that goal. He explained that no one can attain that supreme goal of life without following the verse Anyabilasita Sunyam Jnana Karmadi Anavritam. Continuous ardent endeavor meant exclusively for Sri Krishna and performed out of loving affection for him when devoid of any selfish ulterior desires and not eclipsed by impersonal knowledge fruitive work or any other occupation is known as Uttama Bhakti. Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj emphasized this verse perhaps more than any other, calling it the barometer of bhakti. By applying the criteria described in this verse, Devotees can clearly understand the type of bhakti that our Guru Parampara want us to aspire for and to gauge our own progress. He expected all his disciples to know the verse's meaning. And just now, would they also discuss about Uttama Bhakti? Most pure bhakti is like an uninterrupted flow of honey which flows towards Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. Not for one's own pleasure, but in the service of Krishna. Which is totally devoid of all desires except the desire to satisfy Krishna. It's Uttama Bhakti for pure devotional service. Very good. Very good. One of the words in this verse is anu shilanam. Generally, anu means continuously, and shilanam, of course, means endeavor. So the continuous endeavor of the senses and the service of the Lord. But anu also means under the anugatya, anugatya, under the guidance of Sri Guru. So anu shilanam means continual endeavor with the senses and the service of the Lord under the guidance of Sri Guru. Sri Guru, seeing our endeavor, bestows his mercy, which brings us closer to the goal of bhakti. Guru Nishtha is the backbone of bhakti. Backbone. If you will practice the process, Gradually, your faith towards your Gurudev will come what? Very strong, stronger, and strongest. She
Hare Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jive Doya Kori Sapashara Shriya Dhamma Sahaya Vatari Atanta Turlava Prema Kori Pare Dhara Shikhaya Sharana Gati Dhaka Tera Prana Shikhaya Sharana Gati Dhaka Tera When we will surrender and very hankering for that rati, weeping always, always hankering for the mercy of Krishna and devotees. And when the devotees' heart will be melted, seeing our eagerness, and our exercising of bhakti, like Krishna looked towards the efforts of Mother Jasoda and he was melted. We have no taste. How this test will come? If you will follow the rule and regulations of Srila Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We should follow. Then test will come. And if you are neglecting everything, not by stomaticating, you are falling. How you can hope of Braja Prem? The whole aim of Krishna consciousness is Radha Dasyam, the divine service of Sri Radha. And offenses at the lotus feet of Vaishnavas make one unfit for such service. My instruction is of Rupa Goswami that never criticize anyone. Always try to remember the good qualities of Vaishnavas. And that I, I think for me has helped me not be judgmental of people because if I am really trying to do from my own platform what I can do and can offer, then I can see that everybody's doing the same. And I have no idea their sincerity and their, their connection and their heart offering. It might look so insignificant or even mundane or, or tainted with so many material things, but who knows their heart? be very careful about that. Don't criticize devotees or undevotees, anyone. First try to pure yourself, how you are. Is there any lust in you? All kuti natis, you are not. Be anxious for that, be worried for that. Don't worry for others. Guru is responsible, Krishna is responsible for that. You cannot do anything, then why you have no right to criticize them? My request is don't be mad. To be manjari. Try to follow Upadesh Amrit first. First Upadesh Amrit. And then other writings of Rupa Goswami. And gradually come and go to talk of Bhakti tree. This is what he emphasized. He would always emphasize Rupa Raghunath, uh, make uh, your foundation of Upadesh Amrita, Vacha Vega, Manasukrota Vega, like this. You know, don't try and jump too high, don't imitate, just follow Rupa and Raghunath, what they've said, what they've come to give us. The 
this isn't just something that's manifesting only in the lives of big personalities or qualified personalities or great devotees. It's something that's manifesting in the lives of very unqualified, ordinary, foolish, you know, uh, fallen, you know, ignorant personalities that, that this can also touch the lives and, and transform the lives of someone like me. It is for the most fallen. We must know that all are in, not in one stage of bhakti, different. So, if anyone is nifal, he has not even shraddha, can you tell him that, oh, you are manjari, this is wrong idea. I want to tell you all, very wrong idea. We should try to follow really what is Rupanu. Shri Radha Krishna Padakamale The subject was very high, deep, but now come, sir, gradually it will come, some easy, easier, easiest, and then very rasagya it will come, very rasagya. So you should not be disheartened at all, so high subject, and we are not touching even by mind, so don't be happy. Even the qualification for living out that type of aspiration, maybe thousands of births away, it didn't matter. Still, that the seed of that aspiration was put in our hearts in such a way that we thought, yes, this is something that I, I aspire for. At least it's something I aspire to aspire for. <laughs> O oh, Lord and Lady of the Afflicted, Shishi Radha Govinda, what chance does this lowly servant have of attaining Prem Seva to you, which is sought after by high class devotees? I am completely unfit, but your supreme mercy does not take into account whether one is qualified or not. Therefore, Again, I indulge in begging you for this rare Prem Seva. Gurudev made, us, made it very clear what that goal is and um, how uh, we need to develop a relationship with the residents of Vrindavan so that we can go there. Not that we go there and then develop a relationship. We develop a relationship first and that, that qualifies us to go there. I personally feel a very good school teacher. He is always seeing something that could happen in the person, not where he is right now. So he sees the potential in the person. And very naturally, I had such teachers in school, so naturally one is like flowing in that direction. So I think, in, especially in spiritual life, it's the same. If I would only get what would my what would be my adhikar, would be would be my qualification, I would never even be able to grow. 
and it doesn't really matter how long it's going to take this this journey of evolution and progress, spiritual progress. Right now is what is important and that nourishes me so much. To that extent that someone is fully embracing Mahaprabhu's the service to his Samkirtan movement, to his mission, what comes is in the heart, automatically, from serving Goranga Mahaprabhu's lotus feet, Radha Padam Boja Sudambu Rasi, the tendency to serve the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika and relish and taste the unlimited ocean of nectar of service to her lotus feet. Those who have taken shelter in the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or his associates, I think one day they will be qualified, certain. So don't be hopeless. Don't be hopeless. I see everywhere the rays of hope. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, mercy will be upon you. Mm -hmm. Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj wanted all devotees, regardless of their qualification, to know the goal of the Rupanuga Gaudiya line and to progress steadily toward it. An impeccable sannyasi in the line of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he emphasized the highest goal of the teachings he had inherited from his Gurudev and his Guru Varga. He did so with great care never speaking highly intimate pastimes or advocating that anyone should act prematurely. He balanced this caution with encouragement for senior devotees and newcomers alike. For centuries, devotees have relished contemplating the four reasons for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's advent. Three reasons, although esoteric, were not difficult to comprehend to relish the moods of Srimati Radhika, to distribute Braj Prem through the Holy Name, and to answer the heartfelt call of Sri Advaita Acharya. Yet, some could not conceive how fallen, Kali Yuga, conditioned souls could even aspire for his gift of Raganuga Bhakti, even though this had been delineated by all previous Acharyas. Others took this gift cheaply not aware of the depth of the process which our Guru Varga outlined. Srila Narayan Goswami Maharaj focused on the importance of this reason for Mahaprabhu's descent, emphasizing Srila Rupa Goswami's teaching that sadhan bhakti is practiced with the aim of attaining bhav bhakti. Following in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and other Acharyas, he acted with confidence in revealing the Sampradaya's esoteric truths. For those who were willing to hear him, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj cleared many misconceptions and established proper conceptions. As a result of this clarity, the nature of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy can be more fully grasped and aspired for. Some had the misconception that Raganuga Bhakti Sadhan meant abandoning Vaidhi or regulated Bhakti to perform random acts of devotion based on the whims of the mind and then calling this spontaneous devotion. Some had the misconception that Raganuga Bhakti meant perfected Bhakti. They did not understand that it was one of two types of Sadhan Bhakti. Some considered that if an aspiring devotee in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu even thought about Raganuga Bhakti, it was a symptom of Prakrita Sahajyaism. And some had the misconception that those in the line of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada did not aspire for Raganuga Bhakti Sadhan, even though it is so clearly propounded in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. 
Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj clarified that sincere practice of the main limbs of Vaidhi Bhakti, such as chanting, hearing, and remembering, is never to be abandoned. As long as an inclination has not awakened for the path of rag, one should simply carry out the principles of Vaidhi Bhakti with firm faith. In fact, a Raganuga Bhakti Sadak practices the limbs of Bhakti more steadfastly than the Vaidhi Bhakta. The aspiration to practice Raganuga Bhakti descends by the mercy of a Rasik Vaishnav who is truly practicing Raganuga Bhakti. Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj taught that it is entirely appropriate for fallen Kali Yuga conditioned souls in the line of Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur to pray with deep humility and without the slightest pretense for just a drop of desire to perform Raganuga Bhakti Sadhan to enter their heart, knowing this to be the gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is the topmost of Siddhang in any history, in any practically serious life. I know that you cannot understand, but even something will come. If anyone is taking bath, all water is going down, but something goes in and refresh the body. On similar, whether I am telling and you are not understanding fully, but something will come and it will be to attack. It will be a treasure for you for future. So for this, you should be very bold and strong and try to follow my old teachings these are not my teachings. These teachings are for my Guru Dev, Guru Parampara. Go, Prema, Nanda, In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's dearmost emissaries have carried these priceless gifts through the centuries to the present day. His representatives work conjointly to establish his transcendental, all-merciful mission. remembering when I met him 
How I heard him? <coughs> How my first meeting? How sannyas? How serving him? And last meeting, and I served him in Vrindavan. As if some riddles are going on. He was a very bosom friend of my Gurudev. He was a bona fide Guru Nishtha. You know, Guru Nishtha always internally and outwardly serving his holy master. He has not anything to do for himself, only to carry the order of his holy master and to serve Radha Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said many times, in, on his first tours especially, that if uh, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj had not come, then it would not be possible for me at all to come and speak these things. How can we appreciate the glory of Radha unless we first appreciate the glory of Krishna? If Krishna, a part of a part of a part of a part of him, is Mahavishnu, who breathes in and out innumerable universe, falls at her feet, and his peacock feather falls at her feet, then we can understand her greatness. So it's important to understand the greatness of Krishna first. So Srila Prabhupada laid the groundworks, but he not only laid the groundworks, in his books he gave also the Rasik pastimes and information. There were many disciples that had been chanting all at that point for 25, even some for 30 years. They had been chanting, practicing the regulated principles, reading, the books and becoming more and more uh, acquainted. Many of us had read the books of Srila Prabhupada and, and, and other acharyas, and yet, at least I can only speak for myself, some things I had just missed. I had just missed. Not that they weren't there, not that even Srila Prabhupada didn't say them, because they are there in his, especially in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Especially chapter four of the Adi Lila which is all about Srimati Radhika's moods and the gopi's moods and why did Mahaprabhu descend and take the moods and complexion of Srimati Radhika, what were his reasons for coming, all these things. My experience is that virtually nothing that Gurudev said differs from what Prabhupada taught. Everything is there in Prabhupada's books. Swamiji has written everything. Everything. Ever since I joined Krishna Consciousness in 1966, I'd been hearing classes from God brothers and God sisters, reading a purport, reading a verse from him, and then explaining it. So I'd been hearing explanations of what Prabhupada said or wrote. So similarly, Srila Gurudev explained Srila Prabhupada, but in such a way, such a profound way, that I'd never heard before, that brought out the depths of Prabhupada's meaning that was overwhelming.
A person gives a commentary on a book that he reveres. Isn't it a great glorification of Srila Prabhupada that Srila Gurudev traveled around the world bringing out the glory of Srila Prabhupada's message by giving commentary? Uh, after meeting Gurudev, the words on the pages of Prabhupada's reports just began to dance. It was just and, and, they, they, and so much more meaning was there in Prabhupada's books. And as for how, how it affected my spiritual life, well, everything jumped up. My rounds became more focused. I immediately wanted to chant more rounds. And um, Prabhupada's books, I just developed a, a, a thirst for them. I just practically couldn't stop reading them. There is no more bitter worship than what was conceived by the gopis. So gopis are the topmost devotees. And amongst the gopis, Srimati Radharani is the topmost. Therefore, Srimati Radharani is greater than Krishna. Ah. So this is uh, Gauriya Vaishnava philosophy. It requires time. This Mahamantra <laughs> is separation mode, the pralambha bhav. And I think our Prabhupada, that is Swamiji, has completed this desire to keep in whole world this thing. Gauranga bali te habe pula ka sharira The truth of Mahaprabhu and this noble, great personality, Acharya, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, has actually delineated this in such a sweet, powerful, colorful, sensitive way, taking us right into the very heart of what is rasa. In our Sabdradaya, Actually, all Acharyas has came down in this planet to teach this, but no one openly told all these things so clearly and so easily. So Gurudev said that I have to do this. If I don't do it, then they will say that, oh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada did not give this. He would sometimes say, as did Srila Gorgamina Maharaj, I'm speaking maybe for one or two people. And, but if this conception is not given, then it, it will be lost to the world. So I, I think Gurudev was willing to risk his own personal reputation. He, he was willing to risk everything to make sure that these conceptions are never lost to the world. Bhakti Minor Thakur is telling, Bolibha ekhane jahan tahai ei bhoi Pratishtha sa pache dushto kare. 
He is telling that I am going to tell something, to write something. But I am fearing like Krishna Das Kabiraj Goswami. When he was writing Chaitanya Charitamrit, he was fearing. It is so high class that very rare persons are qualified to read this. So, what should I do? I should not write. But again he thought, if I am not writing all these things, then what will be? It will disappear from this world. This world, these things. And one time, I was in Siliguri and, and Gurudev was with a lot of um, very senior uh, qualified people were, were in an assembly there and he asked me um, just to stand up and say what is the goal of Christian consciousness, what is the goal of, of my life and uh, when I stood up and said to become a maidservant of, the, of Srimati Radharani he became so pleased, like a father's pleased with a small child and I, and I, part of that is also to show that, look how this mood, it's coming and it's, it, and it's manifesting. There's no uh, obstacle to where it can manifest. He's not just giving words, words we can read, words we can hear many places. But it's the words, the words from the heart of such a devotee, they change the samskaras we have in every word. And his absorption is transmitted through his words. And actually it creates a complete new set of samskaras in the very same words. And then we hear from him and suddenly it makes it real. Suddenly it makes it tangible and by that a very new world of dedication is being born in a soul. In morning walks they would all cluster around Gurudev because he is the embodiment of that gift. Yeah. It may not be that in language, like we can communicate in spoken language with each other, but that is not the complete way to communicate. Yeah. The devotees were naturally attracted always. I, re I, I could experience in my heart that there was a reality, something that it was given that was so profound and so powerful that I couldn't even understand. So it gave me so much faith that He's here and this is such an opportunity and I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. I remember praying, you know, I want to hear from him. I was sort of praying to Prabhupada and Krishna, I want to hear from Narayan Maharaj because I think he can help me. Masi is Tawar is Masi everywhere, but I cannot properly accept. I pray Gurudev, I can feel your Masi on my heart. Not only one time, how many times you are told, why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu affair in this world? I feel like Srila Gurudev is given, is given such hope, but even the word hope has a different meaning since I've known Gurudev. It's a hope that comes with everything, with all the tools, with all the strength. Never once did I even see the remotest slightest slip up. He was the most solid, dependable, absolutely perfect example that I could have ever hoped to meet with in my life. 
I've observed in Srila Gurudev's traveling and being with him that he is always overflowing with yeah, that gift that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. Every conversation or <laughs> every lecture he would always end yeah, with that specific yeah, message or donation that you have to identify yourselves with Vrindavan, especially with the mood of those who are yeah, in the line of Rupa Goswami. Marsibuli kept me 31 years when I joined 79, still from that day, still his last breath he kept me. I have seen everything with him, how he is doing bhajan, Sankhapur Nam Gan and so many Slavstuti and doing Pranam, what Das Goswami has showing us, he showed us in his literature Gurudev doing this. Raghunath Das Goswami, okay. topmost Rupanunga Vaishnav and Gurudev following him exclusively. I'm filled with gratitude every day of having had the fortune to have heard and received these teachings from the divine heart of my most beloved Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Hare Krishna Hare